Six Flags America is a medium-sized Six Flags park situated in Bowie, Maryland. For whatever reason, this park does not have the best reputation on social media due to a handful of reasons that are all complete nonsense. My visit taught me to never judge a book by its cover because I walked away thinking this was a very underrated Six Flags park. Six Flags America looked pretty well taken care of, all of the coasters were up and running, and when they went down, maintenance wasted no time in getting them back up and running. I also found the operations to be exceptional, which is odd because one of the biggest complaints this park gets around operations. Maybe the park had heard all the complaints over time and decided to put an effort to make things right. Another thing, this place has a bunch of really fun roller coasters. With nine to be exact, the rides here, especially the ones at the top, are all very enjoyable rides. So in today's video, we are going to be taking all the coasters here and showing them some love by ranking them worst to best. But before we do get into the list, I would highly encourage you all to drop a like and subscribe down below as it's the best way to show your support to the channel. But all right, let's dive in. These are the top nine roller coasters at Six Flags America. Number nine, Great Chase. As with many other kids coasters at corporate amusement parks, this is a Zamperla family gravity model. I have always found these to be relatively lousy for kids coaster standards, though I do respect the manufacturer's marketing ability because these are compact and likely pretty affordable also. All I'm saying is it could afford to be smoother and more comfortable for younger guests wanting to make their way up to more intense coasters. Number 8, Mind Eraser. The first thrill coaster on the list is one with a pretty horrible reputation. I, for one, am typically not really bothered by these Vacoma SLCs, however. Obviously, some are better than others, and some are worse than others, and I found this one to be kind of middle of the road. It wasn't an atrocious coaster like many made it out to be, but I definitely would not ride it again, especially because it's highly cloned. Seriously though, as long as you keep your head out and stabilize yourself, I don't think you're going to have too bad of a time on Mind Eraser. Number 7, Firebird. Here we have it, the best B&M in Maryland out of the, um, one. But in all seriousness, this is not a very good ride. I'd probably say it's my least favorite coaster from the manufacturer, but it was also their first to be fair, so I have to cut them some slack. So I personally didn't think it was as rough as many made it out to be, I just found the layout to be super boring and uninspired. Plus, it was built to accommodate stand-up trains, as unpopular as those were, so I actually think I would have liked the original Iron Wolf or Apocalypse version better. But hey, if I do have to say one good thing about Firebird, it's a beautiful ride to look at. I honestly think this has one of the best color schemes on a coaster I've seen, so it is rather unfortunate that it sports such an underwhelming ride. Number 6, Roar. While the Roar over at Six Flags Discovery Kingdom has been RMC'd, the one here at Maryland has unfortunately been neglected, so that hasn't happened here yet. I do recall the new park president saying that he shows interest in giving the coaster the RMC treatment, which would be the perfect new addition of the park in my opinion. But the question for this specific list is, how does Roar ride as it is? Well, I got a front row ride, so it wasn't very rough, but the layout was pretty uninteresting with a lot of turns high in the air that really weren't doing anything. I did enjoy the short bit towards the end where the train builds up quite a bit of speed and it has decent pacing there, but unfortunately there isn't enough of that decent pacing spread throughout the entire ride. So I'd probably call this one of the worst GCIs for sure, so let's just hope it has a better future with a certain hybrid conversion. Number 5, Ragin' Cajun. Damn, this ride is intense. It maybe doesn't look like it from the outside, but don't let this thing fool you. In the second half of the ride, when it really gets going, this thing starts spinning out of control. Very few coasters have the ability to make me nauseous, but Ragin' Cajun is one of them. I mean, I was expecting this because it's the most significant part of its reputation, but this really was hard to believe until I saw it myself. In all honesty, if any of you are prone to motion sickness or nausea even a little bit, I would recommend sending this one out. Number 4, Wild One. Built in 1917 at Paragon Park in Massachusetts, this ride has been through a wild ride, no pun intended. It first opened with the name Giant Coaster, and in its life as such, it suffered destruction from fires, maintenance issues, and financial hardships in the park it was in. So, in 1986, the classic coaster has been moved over to Six Flags America, where it has been operating at ever since. And I think it's safe to say that the park is doing a phenomenal job keeping this ride in good shape. Not only does it tend to run very smooth, but the combination of airtime and laterals are exactly what I'm looking for a ride like this. Contrary to a lot of old wood coasters that are often left in the dust, Wild One has a shockingly good reputation because of its many strengths. I definitely recommend giving this one a ride as not only is it a century year old piece of history, but it also runs beautifully and I truly hope it stays that way. Number 3, Joker's Jinx. Narrowly edging out Wild One is the bizarre looking and relatively rare premier ride spaghetti bowl coaster. Launching riders to 60 miles per hour in a matter of seconds, this LAM launch is just the beginning of what Joker's Jinx has to offer. What's best about this coaster is that it's an outdoor iteration of the style of ride, and the outdoor versions do not have a mid-course brake run like the indoor ones do. This means that it can run considerably faster than the others, making for some super intense transitions and great pacing. I will say, Poltergeist at Six Flags Fiesta Texas appeared to run noticeably quicker than even this one, and I have no clue why. 
but this still doesn't fall too far behind and I'd even say it's one of my favorite coasters by Premier Rides. The layout is seriously funky, I mean just look at it, and what brings me joy is that it runs as good as it looks. You cannot always say the same about some other coasters out there. Number 2, Batwing. I've said it once and I'll say it again, the Vacoma Flying Dutchman model is immensely underrated. I first found this to be the case when I rode Nighthawk at Carowinds last month and really enjoyed it. But awesome enough, Batwing took out the one element I didn't really enjoy on Nighthawk, which was the double corkscrews. On this one, it's a double barrel roll which makes a lot more sense and is a lot more comfortable. But despite just that element, the entire ride is a lot better than most make it out to be. The flying sensation is fantastic, the forces are super strong, and it's also pretty smooth in all honesty. So you won't hear any complaints from me I am so glad Batwing is still being maintained to perfection. Number 1, Superman Ride of Steel. This ride is extremely underappreciated. Sure, it has a bizarre layout, but are the bizarre elements all too bad? No, of course not. The second massive helix and straight track maybe don't do a lot for the ride, but the first one will cause you to gray out, and hey, even if it didn't, there are plenty of other fantastic highlights on this ride. Starting with the first few elements and the sequence of such, you've got your massive hypersized drop into a very fast low to the ground turn that causes you to gray out hardcore every ride. And before you have time to recover, you are rising up a humongous camelback that provides provides a nice pop of floater airtime. But this is not my favorite airtime moment on the ride, however. The last few hills provide some more fun moments of air and, wait, what's that? There's more airtime? Well, yes, I could rave to you guys all day long about one particular moment on this ride. This camelback following the straight track, I don't know what it is about the shaping of the element, but oh my god, you go flying out of your seat no matter what row you're in. This isn't floater either, this is borderline ejector airtime, which is not something a lot of hypers can say they've got. It's also worth noting the crazy speeds, the pretty setting, the amazing lap bar restraints, and the long ride time. This is honestly a super complete ride and I wish more people came out to the park to show it some love. So there we have it, the top 9 roller coasters at Six Flags America. Truthfully, this is an underrated amusement park with an underrated lineup of roller coasters. I have no idea where some of this hate comes from because it does not deserve nearly as much as it gets. With that being said, let me know down below what you think of some of the coasters here and how you would rank them up against each other. Also, don't forget to like the video and subscribe to the channel if you have not already as it's the best way to show your support. But other than that, thank you all so much for watching and I'll see you all very soon. Bye everyone.